Hello everyone and welcome to Online Worship with the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on this beautiful day that God has given us. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of our staff and all of the people who are helping to lead worship today, we are just honored that you are here and so glad that you are participating in this online worship service. I want to extend a special welcome to all of those who are new with us for the first time today in Online Worship with Douglas Avenue. We are just honored that you are here, that you've chosen to join with us. I want to encourage you to fill out the contact form. It's pinned right in the comment section of uh, our Facebook Live feed. And I encourage everyone to um, fill out that contact form today. There's, of course, a place there to put your contact information. There's also places there for you to put your prayer requests that go right to our pastors and to our prayer team. And this is all a wonderful way that we can connect with you in this season of being online together, that we can connect you in ministry, that we can pray with you, that we can connect you into small groups and service and all of those things. So please use that contact form. Now, when we do gather together for this time of online worship, we promise 
to be a blessing and to participate. Now, when we promise to participate, that means that we're going to really participate in what we're doing in online worship. I encourage you to set aside other devices, to shut down other distractions, maybe to light a candle to help you focus, and really just come on in and participate with what we're doing. When we're singing, sing. When we're praying, pray. Uh, and when we're listening, listening. Just do all of that and fully participate. And then we promise to be a blessing. That means that in our comments, the way that we are with the folks in our household, wherever we are worshiping, the way that we're together as a community, that all of it is a blessing to everyone that's participating and to the world out there, to the community at large. Now, when we do come together, we also share the love and peace of Jesus Christ with each other. We're not just people watching a video. We are worshiping people who are bound together in Jesus Christ. And so we share that peace and love. I encourage you to do that right now. You can say, the peace of Christ be with you and respond and also with you. You can do that with me online, with people in the comment section, with people you may be gathered with. And then we're going to be led by that by some of the wonderful folks of our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family. Peace be with you. We're Stan and Kim Edge. I'm on the Finance Committee. And I'm Chairman of the Foundation Board. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. And also with you. Also with you. Can you tell everybody what your name is? Huh? Who are you? KJ. KJ, and this is Chris, and I'm Abby. Hi, guys. No questions for you. No questions. Oh, okay. No questions. Hey, you ready? Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And also with you. My name is Paige Kebble, and I work upstairs with Mark in the booth. Peace be with you. Hello, I'm Ashley Rao, and this is my husband, Barry Rao, and these are our daughters. <laughs> What's your name? Lucy. And this is Penny, and this is Wendy. Please join us in the call to worship. We welcome a new way. Let's practice saying that together now. We welcome a new way. Did you hear the good news? The kingdom of God has drawn near. We welcome a new way. Do we trust the good news? We place our trust in Jesus. The one who calls us to follow him. We welcome a new way. Do we have the courage to leave our former lives behind? We put our faith in the Lord, our rock, and our salvation. We welcome a new way. Yay. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Nancy Vereen. Would you join me with Lord of the Dance? Oh, 
are blessed in our online worship in the month of January to hear from folks in our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family about their deepest hopes for 2021. I encourage you to come in close and let's listen to this witness. Hi, I'm Maria the Friends, and I'm a part of the youth group at Douglas Avenue. For 2021, I'm hoping for less COVID-19 cases and deaths because I would like to go back to school full time. And I'm also hoping for more efforts for race equality. Now it is time for small talk. I invite all of the children who are with us for online worship to get in close to your devices and your screens so you can hear and see everything with Small Talk. Small Talk 2 is brought to us by Laud the Lamb and his assistant, Miss Lori, who is our Director of Children and Youth Ministries. So come in close so you can hear everything that Miss Lori and Laud have going on with Small Talk. Good morning, everybody. It is cold here this morning, but... Laud insisted on going ice fishing. And we have his his basket here of things that he's caught. I, he's actually in the basket right now. Give me one second. Laud, what are you doing? A little cold, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're a little cold. I thought ice fishing was a bad idea, but he went anyway. And I see that he's caught... Oh, you've caught some real treasures here, Lot. Really, you didn't go ice fishing. You went like house fishing around the house. We have, you know, our our. He found Nemo. Found him, and we have more goldfish, of course, and more goldfish and goldfish, goldfish, and. But he does have this really cool big net, which. I bet reminded him of the story, right? Of Jesus and the disciples fishing? Yeah? Mm hmm It did. It reminded him of that. And this is where, in the Bible, Jesus starts convincing his disciples to follow him. Yes, they follow him. To spread the word of God and his love and his forgiveness. And so that's why sometimes we call those disciples the fishers of men. You're not really fishing for, you know, people. That'd be really wrong, right? There's nobody walking around with like a hook stuck in there. Yeah, no. But they were fishing, not just for fish, with their nets, but fishing to have people follow. So keep that in mind. I wouldn't go fishing right now for real fishing because, well, our sea of Sherman out here is frozen, but there's geese sitting on it. You could fish for geese. No, bad idea. Have a great Sunday, everybody, and follow Jesus. Bye. Good morning. I'm Keith Schnepp. I'm presently chairman of the board of trustees and a longtime member of Douglas Church. Our first reading this morning is from Psalm 62, verses 5 through 8. Let us open our hearts to the reading. Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Hi, I'm Ann Burton. I am chair of the Staff Parish Relations Committee at Douglas Avenue. Our second reading from the Bible is the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. 
And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee and his brother, John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them and they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired men and followed him. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible readings we have received today. Amen. Good morning. Please join members of the praise band as we sing Walk by Faith. worship this January as we welcome this new year of 2021 with new hope, new healing, and new possibilities. We dove in with the welcome of God as each and every person is a beloved child of God and how this is expressed so ultimately and powerfully in the waters of baptism. Last week, we welcomed the power of honesty in invitation, relationships, and acceptance of ourselves, others, and the realities of the social conditions that too often divide us. Today, we're considering what it is in this new year to welcome a new way. I think the phrase a new way resonates deeply with our Christian faith. One of the earliest descriptions of people who love and follow Jesus the Christ is that of people of the way. 
further that way is about a way of living, being and acting in the world, in our speech, in inward spiritual practice, in outward spiritual practice, in relationship with others, and in our individual and communal action in the world. So what can this new way be for us in 2021? We're certainly looking forward to a new way of being with COVID-19, with vaccination distribution rolling out, with people renewing their resolve to care for one another through mask wearing and social distancing, with the hope for being in person in community more and for healing of people's bodies, healing of the community, healing of our nation, healing of the world, all of it not to play upon tropes for the beginning of a new year, but this new way can certainly be new resolutions for a new year, right? Like practices of health and wholeness, eating healthily, exercising, checking into rehab, getting serious about recovery, participating in and following the 12 steps, following those de-stressing guidelines your doctor has been hounding you about for years, or tending to long overdue health concerns with blood pressure or blood sugar or heart palpitations. Maybe your new year, new way practices are about spiritual engagements in prayer and study and small group participation and regular worship participation online. Maybe your new year, new way practices are about a new way of putting your faith into public action, giving financially, giving time in a new way in service, stepping into a new community engagement, or working in solidarity and allyship with people who are not like you. Maybe those new year, new way practices look like complaining less and laughing more, spending less and giving more, being inside less and being outside more, working less and bike riding more, falling into depression less and rising up in joy more. I can go on. All of these new ways are awesome and whatever it is you've been considering, I encourage you to not give up. I can, uh, even if I can hear some of you saying like, oh, Pastor Meredith, it's January 24th and I've already failed at this. Look, it's only January 24th and you have not failed. Just keep going or get going or try again. And I say whatever you do, don't go it alone. That's why you have church family. That's why we work together to be able to be connected in so many ways. It's why we have small group for study and encouragement and prayer and people who are praying for you and with you already. Listen, there is too much love and support and goodness in your corner to already give up. Wherever you are and whenever you are joining in with this time of worship, just go ahead and say amen with me about this. Amen. Today, I also encourage us to open up ourselves to what may be a new way of listening to, learning from, and being transformed by the work of the Holy Spirit in engaging our Bible stories. It is important to dig in, ask questions, and pay attention to what is actually in our Bible, what is not there, and what is missing to us when we don't look into the historical, social, and political realities of the time our Bible stories were written, as well as paying attention to our own realities. This is how the Holy Spirit works on us and in us, why it is our scriptures are continually a source of learning, inspiration, and a new way of living and acting in our world. But I also believe this kind of new way comes with a warning. The danger in doing this is that we may find ourselves particularly challenged in our comfort, in the status quo, and find ourselves propelled forward in a new way as people who love and follow Jesus and his radical proclamation of the coming kingdom of God. Like in today's reading from the Gospel of Mark that Anne shared with us. This passage and its parallel passages in Matthew, Luke, and John are very familiar to many of us with Jesus calling his first disciples. The Gospel of Mark is our first written down gospel now, sometime around 70 of the Common Era. And it was likely intended to be read or recited or performed out loud in its entirety. 
So the Gospel of Mark moves quickly, and you very often hear phrases like, and immediately Jesus jumped up and did this, or said this, immediately Jesus went here, or immediately went there. It's a fast-moving 16 chapters. There's no birth story. It just opens with John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness, Jesus showing up, being baptized and tested. And by verse 14 of the very first chapter, Jesus is calling his first disciples, which is our gospel reading for today. I'm going to admit, I'm unsettled by the rapid answer of those first disciples, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Jesus says, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And up they hop and they go right away. They leave their fishing nets, their livelihoods, their family, and they follow Jesus right then and there. I think I would have been like, what? How? Why? Where are we going? Fish for people? I think I would have wanted at least an outline of a plan and a chance to pack a bag or at least grab my water bottle and a snack, even if we weren't going to travel very far away from home. For me, feelings of dis-ease and discomfort are good signs that I need to take a deeper look into the text, into the setting, into the, what is going on here? I also think that being too comfortable with a Bible story is another good sign to take a deeper look into the text, but that will have to wait for another time. For today, I went digging around in the socio-history and particularities of life in the early first century around the Sea of Galilee and fishing, because fishing is a major theme for Jesus and the early Christians. New Testament scholar, educator, and activist Ched Myers has done seminal work with the Gospel of Mark in this area, most known in his acclaimed text, Binding the Strong Man, a political reading of the Gospel of Mark and more recent writing on the socio-political setting of the Gospel of Mark as well. Now I want you to go with me here as I do my best to summarize as we seek a new way of hearing and understanding this familiar story. Now the Sea of Galilee is the setting for the first half of Mark's Gospel and its primary economy is fishing. During the time that Jesus and his first called disciples were growing up, Herod Antipas ruled the area around Galilee. He was placed there by the emperor of Rome, Caesar Augustus. When Augustus died and Tiberius became emperor, Herod Antipas came up with a great plan to solidify his power and the standing of his house, the Herodians. We hear about them at various times throughout the gospel stories. Herod built a new capital city called Tiberias, wisely named for the new emperor. Herod built this new capital city on the shores of the Sea of Galilee to be a completely thoroughly Romanized administrative and military center deep in the heart of Judea. This new capital city included a royal palace, probably where John the Baptist was brought when he was arrested and later beheaded. Remember, John the Baptist's arrest is noted right at the beginning of our scripture reading for today. Now, building a new capital city and new industry brought craftsmen to the area to be itinerant construction workers up and down the coastline, like perhaps a certain carpenter from Nazareth named Jesus. As Herod is solidifying power with the building of this new capital city on the Sea of Galilee. The fishing industry around the Sea of Galilee was steadily being restructured for the export of fish across the Roman Empire. As in, the family fishing business that both fed the family and earned a living was transformed so that the majority of fish were salt preserved or made into fish sauce that could be much more easily shipped. Now for the Herodians and their political allies, this meant they could control the fishing leases, expensive fishing leases, and the taxing of the fish product, its processing, and the transportation of it. This manufacturing and production shift served to marginalize and impoverish formerly self-sufficient fishing families. Do you get the picture? 
The fishermen were being exploited and increasingly falling to the bottom of the economic hierarchy. They were the working their butts off poor, not well respected in the social hierarchy, and with no relief in sight. I think that maybe, just maybe, it makes a whole lot of sense that these fishermen of Galilee, Peter, Andrew, James, John, that they were the first people to rise up and follow Jesus with his message of God's coming kingdom. And the message of God's coming kingdom isn't some life after death promise. God's kingdom is a promise of a just and equitable society and economy and relationship in community. So say yes to an offer to come fish for people for God's kingdom? You bet. That sure sounds like a better way to be about what the law and prophets had been proclaiming. Sure better than plying my hard-honed craft of fishing for Herod and the Roman Empire and thus continuing to participate in the economy that is crushing my family and the poor and the disenfranchised in my community. That helps a little bit, doesn't it? Why would Peter, Andrew, James, and John rise up, leave their nets and family to follow Jesus and fish for people? Jesus is calling up the poor and marginalized to be about this new movement of love and justice for all people, to rise up and be about the kingdom of God coming near. This may be a new way of hearing and understanding this fast-paced story of calling disciples to fish for people. And it's a far cry from saving souls for an afterlife that this phrase has too often been commandeered to be about. Jesus invited those fishermen to rise up and follow him, and they did. They spend the next three years learning from Jesus, focusing their lives on his mission of love and justice, of healing and feeding, of questioning and praying, of sacrificial giving. And in their following of Jesus, Jesus shows them how to fish for people, how to be sacrificial leaders. It is these followers of Jesus who become the leaders of the Christians who share the love, mercy, feeding, healing, justice, and grace of Jesus throughout the world, followers of the way. I pray that this quick look at some of the socio-political economic history of the Sea of Galilee helps you in your understanding. But you may be finding it a bit unsettling maybe in a new way. Jesus' call to the disciples, to us, is to follow him and be about the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of political power brokers or the kingdom of fear or the kingdom of lies or the kingdom of wealth and prestige or the kingdom of destructive economy. No, the kingdom of God. For many of us who are comfortable, who benefit from the white supremacy and systemic racism of our economics, politics, and social systems, this should make us unsettled, stop us, and cause us to ask questions. What does it mean for me to rise up and follow Jesus? What are we being called to leave behind us? What economic or social systems will we need to challenge? And how will that challenge erode our own safety, security, or privilege? For those of us at the edges and margins of social and economic power, we will also need to rise up and follow Jesus on the way. What fears and worries do we need to put aside? Where will we find the courageous relationships that will sustain us in our newfound path? How must we allow Jesus' way to transform our lives, our hearts, our families, our work? For all of us, Jesus' invitation is to a new way, a new way of living, a new way of loving, a new way of serving, a new way of caring, a new way of hoping, a new way of working, a new way of community, a new way of justice. Jesus' call rings out today with the same clarity and urgency that was heard by Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Will we hear? And will we follow? 
And will we bless each other and our world as we walk this new way of God's love, God's hope, and God's justice in this new year? My prayer is that I will, that you will, that we will, that together our whole world will. Amen. Join us for singing, Lord, you have come to the light shore. I'm Ellen Dixon, and I attend Douglas Avenue Church, and I've come to pray with you this morning. Thank you for joining me with me this time together. Dear God, our loving Savior, we come to you this morning at our worship time to be with you and to sit at your feet to tell you how we appreciate you. Thank you for this precious time of telling you our praises and talking of our needs and the happenings in our lives our God of new ways. We thank you for the skills of this congregation of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church to create these worship times, the small groups and the ministries such as Compass for Kids, wouldn't it be lovely, along with care for the community in the micro pantry and providing meals to the warming center. Thank you for the prayer team of this church. We ask that you give insight to these members of the prayer team as they pray for the requests given by the congregation and those in the community. They're done during the worship online and however these prayers are gotten to the church, they are put onto the prayer list. We pause to ask for encouragement for people who give support to people in medical situations, people who give encouragement in being friends, People who give encouragement by listening to those they see and talk with, those who service at stores, they de may deliver meals or groceries, protect us in the community or teach our kids. Father, thank you for technology that allows us to see people who care we care about on Zoom or FaceTime or learn information that helps us or educates us or keeps us alert to what we need. Thank you for a safe inauguration. We are excited to see young people like Amanda Gorman, the junior poet Lariat, who performed her wonderful poem at the inauguration. To see her showcase her skills is exciting. We are also grateful for a country that works for the betterment of its citizens. This morning, we lift up Donald Trump and his family to your care. We lift up Joe Biden and his family to your care. Also Kamala Harris and her family, Mike Pence and his family, 
as these leaders transition. May they listen to you and ask for assistance to move on. We also want to give uh, attention to Chris Welch, our new speaker of the house in Illinois. Please help us work for peace and care for all who live and work in the United States of America. May care be given to them all. Help us as we pray for those around us in their particular situations. May we show God's love and extend God's grace. May we give courage to the people who have medical happenings in their lives, such as cancer, surgeries, and illnesses. Help them in pain and maybe loneliness. Decisions in these times can be challenging. Please hold their hands and their hearts during this time. Thank you for new babies that bring excitement and new hope. And then there are new jobs, new happenings around schooling, whether they're doing hybrid learning or starting homeschooling or any changes in this learning pattern. Some I know are on college campuses for the first time. Please walk with them all. May they feel and know your presence. My God, we give you our energy levels. Sometimes we're just weary of thinking and planning. I do thank you that there are so many things and ways of getting our needs met, but it can drain our energy and sap our strength by your grace. May we see how you are helping us, helping us endure. Great God of love, you are supplying our needs and we lift our hands up in great cheer to you. Our sufficiency, and our lover of our personhood is who you are. Hooray for you, our marvelous God, and the lifter of our heads. Thanks for letting us come and be here with you, for being close to you, being at your feet, and feeling your loving hand on our shoulders. Fill our hearts as we leave this prayer time with you, our supreme caregiver. Amen. And now may we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. It is my privilege and honor to invite you into our spiritual practice of generosity. Your financial gifts make a world of difference at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in their support of all of the ministries that we do online, the things, uh, the ways that we're able to be in service to our community and to our world. It all goes to work and we are so grateful for the way that you generously give. You can give to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church using our online giving portal. That link is available right in the comment section. It's also available through our webpage. You can uh, give through your financial institution, setting up automatic payments, or set those up with our financial institution. Just let us know in the church office if you need assistance with that. And then, of course, you can send in your checks right to the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church office. I encourage you, if not already done so, again, to fill out that contact form as a way to give yourself right now into the ministries of our church so that we can connect with you and pray with you. And then I want to encourage you to give some special attention right now to our video witness. We have a special uh, moment and a follow-up with a mission that we've been doing with Du Bois Elementary School, our local elementary school, as they began a new semester with some in-person hybrid learning. So come in close and watch this video mission moment. Welcome to the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church Mission Moment for Sunday, January 24th, 2021. For many years, the members of DAUMC and the students and teachers at nearby Du Bois Elementary School have been partners in education. In 2020, the coronavirus pandemic forced students at Du Bois and across the nation into a virtual learning situation. To meet the challenge, members of Douglas Avenue stepped up, donating the necessary funds to purchase many headsets, 
so that the students at Du Bois Elementary School could have effective learning at home. But now it's a new year, and with the easing of restrictions, students at Du Bois are beginning to return to the classroom. Because of your generous donations, money still remained in the Du Bois Contingency Fund, so we asked Principal Dan Ford how DAUMC could help. His answer? Purchase disposable masks for the students. This week, volunteers from DAUMC delivered a large box of protective masks to Principal Ford at Du Bois Elementary. The students and teachers at Du Bois want to thank their friends at DAUMC for helping to keep them safe and healthy during these difficult times. Join us in our final hymn today, Jesus Calls Us. Thank you so much for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I pray that this experience has been meaningful and powerful, that it has helped disturb you in all the right ways, and that you will continue to connect with us and join in online worship, and that you will connect with us so that we can connect with you in prayer and in service to our community. If you've not used that contact form, please do so now so that we can do all of those things together. And now as you go into your day, Go knowing that you are a beloved child of God, that Jesus calls you forward into his way, into the kingdom of God, and that the Holy Spirit will guide and will empower you to be about that justice and that mercy and that love in our world. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.